Now let's take an example on how to find the Jacobian using static forces and moments propagation method. Uh, so we'll take the classic 2R robot. It has two links, L1 and L2, and two joins theta1 and theta2. And we've assigned here the frames, frame 0 and 1 and 2 and frame 3 right here. Um, on frame 3, we have uh, two forces, general forces, F3 relative to frame 3 and N3 relative to N3. So these are the uh, mo moments acting on the end effector and the forces acting on the end effector. So for this to our robot, calculate the forces and moments acting on each joint and then calculate the joint torques and find the Jacobian matrix relative to frames 0 and 3. And given for this problem, the uh, values for forces on the third uh, frame, that would be Fx and Fy. And as you notice here, there's no value for Fz, it's zero, because this is a planar robot. So any force in the z direction is not going to affect the motion. And then for the moments, uh, it's zero, zero, and nz. And again, nx and ny are zeros because it they will not affect uh, the motion of a planar robot. Now, if we go through uh, assigning the frames and then finding the dh parameters, we're going to find them to be as shown here uh, on this table. From the dh parameters, we can find t01, t12, and t23. Multiply all these transformation matrices together, and then we can find the total transformation matrix t03. Uh, now we can go ahead and start uh, the force and moment propagation method. Uh, and here we always start with frame 3. And the reason for this is because frame 3 is the frame that uh, we have the forces and moments for. Uh, as you saw in the, in the problem, uh, N3 and F3 are given. So as usual, we like to organize this um, in a way so that we can always return back whenever we need it. Uh, so I'm going to start with frame 3. And uh, just something to point out here, in the velocity propagation method, we started with frame 0 because velocities of frame 0, which is the ground, are known. Uh, and then we go forward to frame 1, 2, all the way to frame n. Uh, in the static forces and moments propagation method, it's the other way around. We start with the last frame, frame n. In this case, it's frame 3. And then from there, we can go backwards to frame 2 and 1. And actually, no need to go down to frame 0 because frame 0 is the ground and there's no joint uh, on the ground. Uh, so here we're going to start with frame 3. And the forces are given already in the problem. Uh, forces acting on frame 3 relative to frame 3 are F3. And that would be Fx, Fy, and 0 given. And for the moment, uh, N3 relative to frame 3 are also given to be 0, 0, and Nz. Now moving on to frame 2, uh, we apply the formula, uh, frame forces of frame 2 relative to frame 2 are rotation matrix 2 to 3 uh, multiplied by the frame uh, 3 forces relative to frame 3. Now R to 3 here is exactly the way it's written uh, in the T uh, to 3, so no need to transpose anything for this method. Uh, we put the rotation matrix and then the forces from the previous step right here. And that would give us the forces acting on frame 2 relative to frame 2. Now for the moments of frame 2 relative to frame 2, again we use the equation we developed earlier. And we multiply the rotation matrix of 2 to 3 multiplied by uh, the moments of frame 3 relative to frame 3 from the previous step. And then add to this uh, the position of frame 3 relative to frame 2. And that can be uh, taken from the transformation matrix, the last uh, column, column 4, of the transformation matrix 3 relative to 2. And we multiply this by F22 from here. Okay, so we plug these in, and F22 is right here, again, okay, and then that would give us the uh, moments of frame 2 relative to frame 2. Now we move on to frame 1. And again, we use the same formula that we used earlier. So this is now the forces of frame 1 relative to frame 1. And that would be the rotation matrix of frame 2 relative to 1. And we take this directly from transformation matrix of 2 relative to 1. And then this is multiplied by uh, the forces from the previous step 
for frame two relative to frame two. We do this multiplication and we come up with the forces of frame one relative to frame one. Then we go on to the moments of frame one relative to frame one. And again, we use the same formula. We multiply the rotation matrix of frame two relative to one times the torques uh, or moments of frame two relative to frame two from the previous step, frame two. And then we add to this the position of frame two relative to one. And again, that would be the fourth column on the transformation matrix uh, T of two relative to one. And we cross this with the force of one relative to one, which again, we don't take this from the previous step on frame two. We take it right from here, from this step, uh, F one relative to one. Uh, so we do this multiplication and cross, pro cross product, and then we come up with um, the moments of frame one relative to frame one. Now we don't need to go down all the way to frame zero, and simply because ultimately what we need out of these uh, forces and moments is uh, the forces acting on the joints or the moments acting on the joints for prismatic or revolute joints. Since we don't have any joints zero, Okay, so this is zero is the ground. There's no joint zero on the ground. So we don't need to proceed and find uh, the forces and moments on frame zero. And that would be just a waste of time to go uh, forward with uh, this. Now that we found all the forces and moments for each frame, we're ready to go ahead and extract the forces and moments for the joints. If we have prismatic joints, uh, that means we need to find the forces for these joints. Uh, if we have revolute joints, then we have to find the torques for these joints. So since our robot only has uh, revolute joints, two revolute joints, we're going to use only the equations for revolute joints. So here we have uh, tau 1, which represents the torque for joint 1. Uh, and for this one, we use the, uh, the N11, or the moments for 1 relative to 1. Again, if this was a prismatic joint, then we use the force instead of the torque. So in this case, it's a revolute joint, so we use N11 and we transpose it. So normally it's a three by one uh, vector. When we transpose it, it becomes one by three. And if you can recall, it was zero, zero, and the third element was this quantity. And we multiply this by Z11, which is zero, one, one always. So this whole process basically is what, what it's doing. It's ex extracting the third element on that vector. So we take this out of the vector. Uh, one by three times three by one gives us one by one, which is a scalar. And that scalar represents the torque needed for joint one to keep the arm at static equilibrium. Now we proceed for joint two. Again, joint two is also a revolute joint. So we use N22 for it. If it was a prismatic joint, then we use F22. Uh, we transpose it and put it here, and then we have Z22, which is 0, 0, 001. So 1 by 3 times 3 by 1 gives me a scalar, and that scalar basically is the third element on that vector for the torque. So this is the torque needed for joint 2 uh, so that the robot is at static equilibrium. Now, if we line these two tau's together, so tau 1 and tau 2, since we have only two joints, if we have more joints, we line all of them up here, both for the prismatic and revolute joints. So if we have a combination of prismatic and revolute joints, all of these joint tau's will be lined up here. And that would be the corresponding equation for each one of the tau's. So this is tau 1, we took from the value of tau 1. And this is tau 2, we took it from the value of tau 2. Now up to this point, okay, we did not extract any Jacobian yet. We're going to start off first by extracting the linear Jacobian. So for the linear Jacobian, I didn't put equal sign here because this does not equal to this, but this is extracted from this. So I have tau1 and tau2, these two equations, and I would like to put them in this form. And for this form, since we're talking about the linear Jacobian, all I use is fx, fy, and fz, which is zero in this case. I do not use any uh, moments uh, of, for the end effector. So again, I put this first, fx, fy, and zero in this case, and then I make this matrix uh, bracket, and then I go back and look at the first equation. What's multiplied by fx? We have L1, S2, 
from here, nothing from here, and nothing from here. So that would be L1, S2 in the first element. For the second element, I look at, again, this equation, what's multiplied by Fy. Nothing multiplied by Fy here. Here I have L1, C2, and here I have L2 multiplied by Fy. So I put L1, C2 plus L2 for the second element. For the third element, I'm going to look here what's multiplied by Fz. There is no any multiplication by Fz, so that would be a zero here. Now for tau2, again I go back and look at its equation. What's multiplied by Fx? Nothing multiplied by Fx, so that would be a zero. And then for this element, what's multiplied by Fy? I have L2 multiplied by Fy, so I put L2 here. And then for the third element, nothing is multiplied by Fz, so that would be zero. Now this matrix would be the transpose of the linear Jacobian relative to frame three. Again, this is the transpose. So if I would like to extract the linear Jacobian, I just transpose this equation, and then it turns out to be a three by two uh, matrix. Okay, so that would be the linear Jacobian relative to frame three. As we said earlier, this method uh, brings or finds the Jacobian relative to frame n, uh, or the last frame. In this case, it was frame three. Uh, if we need to find the Jacobian relative to frame zero, we have to pre-multiply by the rotation matrix. So in this case, I have the Jacobian, the linear Jacobian relative to frame three, and pre-multiplied by the rotation matrix of three relative to zero. And that would give, would give me the linear Jacobian of frame uh, relative to frame zero. So if I plug in the matrices here, I will come up with this three by two uh, Jacobian, linear Jacobian relative to frame zero. Now I can simplify this. If you look at these elements, uh, a lot of these elements can be simplified using appendix A at the end of the book. So if I do this simplification, I end up with a simplified version of the Jacobian, three by two Jacobian. Now, all of this talking about the linear Jacobian. If I would like to find the angular Jacobian now, again, I go back to the uh, tau equations as we saw them in the previous slide. So we have tau one and tau two here. And again, I did not put equal sign here because this does not equal to this. We're actually extracting this out of uh, this matrix. So on this side here, I put my uh, moments only of the end of factor. I do not put any forces because forces represent uh, the linear Jacobian and the torques represent the angular Jacobian. So in the previous work, I put the forces for the linear Jacobian. In this work here, I'm going to do, I'm going to put here the angular or um, the moments for the angular Jacobian. So the angular Jacobian, we have 0 for an x, 0 for an ny, and we have nz. So I line them up here. Um, now for uh, this particular matrix, I just put the brackets, and I go back to the equations to find out what are these elements uh, that we can extract from this matrix. So the first equation here for tau1, what's multiplied by nx? Nothing here, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. So that would be a 0. What's multiplied by ny? Again, no ny anywhere here, so that would be another zero. And then what's multiplied by nz? I look here, the only multiplication by nz is one right here. So I put one right here, okay? Now for the second tau, again, I go here and look at what's multiplied by nx, nothing. So I put zero here. What's multiplied by ny? Again, nothing, that would be a zero here. And what's multiplied by nz? I have one multiplied by nz, so I put one right here. Now this gives me the transpose of the Jacobian, uh, the angular Jacobian for this robot. So if you look at this, this is the angular Jacobian of frame uh, of, of the robot given in frame three. Uh, and that's the transpose of that. Now. If I'd like to find the Jacobian, uh, the angular Jacobian relative to frame three, I just transpose this, this matrix to find uh, the Jacobian. 
So that would be the angular Jacobian relative to frame 3, which is a 3 by 2 matrix, just by transposing uh, this matrix. Uh, now again, this is relative to frame 3. If I would like to find the, Jacobian, the angular Jacobian relative to frame 0, then all I have to do is I have to pre-multiply the angular Jacobian relative to frame 3 with the rotation matrix of 3 relative to 0. So plug this in, and then the results will be the angular Jacobian of frame of relative to frame 0. Now let me summarize all the Jacobians that we found so far. We found the linear Jacobian relative to frame 0, and we also found the angular Jacobian relative to frame 0. We found the linear Jacobian relative to frame 3, and we found the angular Jacobian relative to frame 3. Now, if you would like to find the general Jacobian relative to frames 3 and 0, we can just line them up as shown here. So the general Jacobian relative to frame 3 is the linear Jacobian here relative to frame 3 lined up with the angular Jacobian relative to frame 3 at the bottom. So if you look here, the first 3 by 2 elements are the linear Jacobian relative to frame 3, again taken from here. And the bottom 3 by 2 elements are the angular Jacobian relative to frame 3 taken from here. Okay, so that would give me the general 6 by 2 Jacobian. Now, as you notice here, there are three different rows here that are zeros, complete zeros. So we can reduce this down to a planar Jacobian by removing these uh, rows that have all zero elements. And that would give me a 3 by 2 general Jacobian relative to frame 3. I can do the same thing to find the Jacobian relative to frame 0. So the general Jacobian relative to frame 0, I line up the linear Jacobian relative to frame 0 up top here and the angular Jacobian relative to frame 0 at the bottom. Again, the 3 by 2 elements for this general Jacobian are taken from the linear Jacobian relative to 0 here. And then the bottom 3 by 2 elements are taken from the angular Jacobian relative to frame 0 from here. And that would give me a 6 by 2 general Jacobian relative to frame 0. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, all these rows that have all zeros can be eliminated. So we can reduce this down to a 3 by 2 general Jacobian relative to frame 0, which represents a planar uh, Jacobian.